Welcome back, fellow financial independence seekers. It's Matt with Trade In Your Job. Market Watch published an article Friday morning about a contrarian buy signal and a record of weekly money market fund outflows. I wanted to bring this to your attention because the article says that a contrarian buy signal just triggered, according to a Bank of America analysis. We'll talk about this in the context of seasonality. The contrarian indicator cited has mostly to do with market sentiment and whether people are bullish or bearish. There is a retired institutional market analyst named Walter Deemer, and he has a saying, when the time comes to buy, you won't want to. That's pretty much identical to what this Bank of America bull and bear indicator says as well. And looking to the fear and greed gauge, that's looking pretty similar. And what does Warren say? Be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful. This week marked the largest outflow of cash from money market funds on record. That's $108 billion that left money market funds this week. The data Bank of America is using goes back over 20 years, so it includes some times of drawdowns. And when this Bank of America contrarian indicator triggers, it can definitely experience some more short-term volatility, as evidenced by the one-month column here. But as you get out to two-month and three-month, the returns are better. So what the evidence suggests is that three months after the signal, that assets are riskier assets are higher. And if you follow seasonality, November is typically one of the strongest months for stocks. And then looking at the VIX seasonality, October is usually volatile, and then volatility declines into January. Now, could there be some sort of surprise, such as a credit event, or could the ongoing wars, or oil prices, or the 10-year treasury at 5% yield change the outcome this time? Of course it can. But stocks are on relative sale, and often buying the dip when it seems like failure is imminent can pay off. That's similar to the way selling when everyone is greedy can also be prudent. Sometimes it pays to be a contrarian. Remember, this doesn't mean diving right in with 100% of your portfolio or anything. It may mean overweighting or rebalancing. It could mean selling something entirely that is no longer serving you or your risk tolerance and buying something you feel more comfortable holding long term. Chances are if it's keeping you up at night or if you're worried about it, it represents too much of your portfolio. But this might be a time to practice some tactical asset allocation for a few months. Looking at the SPY chart, that's the S&P 500, it's oversold on the channel commodity index down here, and this is on the weekly time frame. So the last few times on the weekly time frame that it was oversold, it was a good buy or accumulate signal. Since the time frame is weekly, it could also remain oversold for weeks. So, th so this does not mean it will just turn on a dime and go back the other direction. Also, as I mentioned in a recent video, long-term bonds, ticker symbol TLT, on the weekly time frame is getting clobbered. Just right down here, you can see clobbered. If the 10-year yield were to stop climbing, though, this could be a good long-term play as well, assuming the U.S. government is able to continue paying its bills. I'd probably also be considering the real estate sector or REITs here as some potential short-term rebounds and long-term accumulations. I base some of this on another contrarian view of buying what is doing the worst year-to-date in terms of asset classes or sectors. Looking at global asset class returns, this is on the Novel Investor website, REITs, investment grade bonds, and emerging markets are the bottom three for the year-to-date performance. And then looking at the S&P sectors specifically, you've got utilities, real estate, and consumer staples and healthcare in the bottom four. And what we know is that usually if there's a period of underperformance, it's then followed by overperformance. Doesn't mean immediately the next year, but it could mean, you know, in years in the future years. Same thing with overperformance. It could mean that that is due for underperformance performance in the future. Anyway, I'll be interested to see where we end the year. I've been buying some calls on various tickers that are expiring in mid-January. What are you accumulating? I'd be interested to hear if you use contrarian signals like this or what you're thinking right now. I've got more content in the pipeline. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.